And in this lesson, what we are going to do is we are going to graph or um, come up with a sketch of these functions using x and y intercepts. So the x-intercepts are the roots of the quadratic equation. So first, if we're looking at this, we're going to need to factor. So let's write f at x equals, and what we want, since it's a simple trinomial, are two numbers that multiply to give you minus 16 and add to give you 6. So 8 and negative 2. Okay, 8 times negative 2 is minus 16. And 8 plus negative 2, or 8 minus 2, is positive 6. Alright, so from here you can see um, what the roots are, right? Or what the zeros are, what the x-intercepts are, all the same thing, right? We're going to have a negative 8, or x equals uh, 2. So our coordinates for our x-intercepts are minus 8 and 0 and 2 and 0. Right, so that's the x-intercepts. Okay, now to figure out what the y-intercepts are, what we need to do is set x equal to 0. Now again, that's really easy to see in standard form, because if we set x equal to 0, this term is gone, and this term is gone, and we're just left with negative 16. So, for our y-intercept, set x equal to 0, and you will get y equal to minus 16. So, our coordinate, then, is 0 and minus 16. So, let's sort of put these points on a graph here. It's just a rough sketch. It's not to scale. But our x-intercepts, one would be over here. Right, at minus 8, one would be somewhere closer, like here, minus 2. And then y would be, well, I'll just put it as far down as I can go, because that would be minus 16. But like I said, not to scale. Now, one common mistake I see students do a lot is when they have these three points and they're graphing with intercepts, is they connect the lines so that the vertex goes through the y-intercept. That is not always the case. You're only going to get the vertex at the y-intercept if you have um, x-coordinates that are the same distance from the y-axis. Okay? Your vertex is always directly in between your two x-intercepts. So again, if you're curious where your vertex is, and minus 8 plus 2 is negative 6, Take the average, so divide by 2, and it's negative 3. So your vertex would be somewhere along this line at x equals negative 3. That's where your vertex is. So what your graph is going to be doing, and you can think of it as um, it opening up because our a value over here is positive. Okay? So it opens up not down. It, it would be really hard to try and draw it opening down though because you would have to then come back which would no longer be a function. So it opens up and we're going to go down below where the vertex is going to meet this line that I've drawn and then come up to the y-intercept and through the other x-axis sort of look like that. Okay, so be careful not to place the vertex here. That's not where it is. All right, so for part B, we have a, a complex trinomial here. We have a negative 2 here. Now, your first thing you might want to do is try looking for a, a common factor, but I don't see one, so we can't pull out a common factor either. So in this case, we're going to have to use our, our x method, our guess and check x method, or decomposition one way or another in order to figure out um, how we can factor this. Okay, so if you want to use decomposition, I'll go over decomposition. Okay. Take this one and this one, 
your a and c coefficients, multiply them together, you get negative 20. Now we need two numbers that add to give negative 20, oh, sorry, that multiply to give negative 20, and add to give positive 1. So again, this is sort of a guess and check thing. A guess and check thing, you might say, well, negative 10 and 2. Well, sure, they multiply to give you minus 20, but they don't add to give you 1. So maybe you'll say um, 5 and negative 4. So 5 and negative 4. Those actually work. Right? 5 times negative 4 gives you minus 20, and if you add those together, you get plus 1. So now we're going to take these numbers and split up that middle term into two terms. So we still have that first term minus 2x squared, and we have this minus 4, so let me just write on minus 4x, and plus 5, plus 5x, so you can see this x has been split into two x terms, which add to give the original one, so I haven't really changed anything, I'm not changing the equation, and then we still have this plus 10 at the end. Then we're going to sort of factor by grouping. So here's our two groups. Our first one, I can pull out a common factor of negative 2, and I'm left with, uh, sorry, negative 2x, and I'm left with x plus 2. And our second one, I can pull out a 5, and so plus 5, and I'm left with x plus 2. Now I'm pulling out our common factor, which is x plus 2. And we're left with minus 2x plus 5. Now, here's something else I'm going to mention. This minus 2x makes things a little bit messy. So what I want to do is I want to pull that negative out. Okay? I could have done it right at the beginning. Because I always say just if you have negative next to your highest um, term, just pull it out as your common factor. But if you didn't, you still have time to do it here. So if I pull the negative out, and I put it out front over here, I'll just write it as another line. Okay, it's very important if I pull it out of here, I have to change the signs of every term in that bracket. And the reason why you would do that is because when you take this negative and you multiply it into this bracket again, you use a distributive property, you multiply it into both 2x and minus 5. So that would become negative 2x and that would become plus 5. Now even though I have it, I pulled it out to the very front, you'd only need to multiply it into one of the brackets, not both. Right? Because then you would foil and one bracket would multiply into the other anyways. So this is important. That's our a coefficient. And it is telling us something. It's telling us that this is going to open down, not up. And then we also need our x-intercepts. Now this, this one's pretty easy to tell, right? Our x-intercept will be negative 2. So we can write that as a coordinate, minus 2 and 0. Here's our x-intercept. Okay, but we need another x-intercept right here. Now you can't just take positive 5, because that won't make this bracket 0. If you took positive 5 and substituted it for x, you would get 2 times 5, which is 10, and then subtract 5, which is 5, not 0. So we need to figure out what is going to make, what value of x is going to make this bracket 0. We can write a little equation on the side here and solve for x. Bring 5 to the other side, so we have 2x equals 5. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 2 and a half, or 5 halves. So there's our other x-intercept. It's 5 halves and 0. So we can do a rough sketch with that. We don't have much room, but I'll still throw it in there. And our one intercept over here is at negative 2. 
And the other intercept is 5 halves. As a decimal, if you prefer decimals, that's 2.5. So it's just a little bit further away than our other x-intercept. Which means, again, the, the, the vertex is not going to be your y-intercept. It's going to be a little bit to the right here. And you can figure out what that is by um, finding the average of your x-intercepts, which we've done before in our previous lesson. But this question is asking us to find the y-intercept. Okay, so to find the y-intercept, we need to figure out what that function is when x is 0. Because any time you hit this y-axis, your value of x is right there at 0. Okay, again, looking at it, this whole term will be 0 if x is 0. Because 0 multiplied by negative 2 is 0. That'll be 0. We're just left with 10. Okay. We might have been able to predict it was um, a positive number since we are going to be opening down. And as we sketch our graph, just remember we're going to go a little bit higher where the vertex is just to the right. Like this. there. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these functions, but we're going to graph them, not with a graphing calculator, but we're going to use Desmos. Okay, so here I plotted the first function, which is x squared plus x minus 5. Okay, now you can see right on Desmos, it actually will plot your x-intercepts, which are not nice numbers, which is why I said do it on Desmos. Okay, okay the y-intercept is actually a nice number. That's easy to pick out from standard form. But the x-intercepts are not so much. So what I want you to try 